hi and welcome to the channel uh, this time around I'm looking at some movies that I just received I'm not reviewing them yet it's more like a haul video but I'm going to review them all and you might want to find out what they are before I review them and some of them fortunately for me I got for nothing umbrella entertainment one of the entertainment companies here in Australia that's producing really nice physical media gave me some movies to review they're not a sponsor of the channel at all but I've got some interesting cult stuff I've got one hidden gem which they didn't give to me but I wanted to add because I want people to know about it and all of them are going to be worthwhile so let's get started I mentioned Bruce Lee on the channel before I did a review of Enter the Dragon which was a lot of fun Umbrella Entertainment has put out a set of four movies so far called Films of Fury and Films of Fury are the four major Bruce Lee movies around Enter the Dragon. They're the ones beforehand. There's the posthumous Game of Death. And I've watched two of them so far. And these are beautiful transfers of the movies. They've got a few extras in them. They're quite wonderful. And I really enjoyed revisiting Bruce Lee's early work. Because when I saw them in cinemas, they were scratch prints. The subtitles were pretty shit. And a couple of these ones I haven't seen since. And it's really nice to get back to them. These are the ones that um, Bruce Lee did after he was in Hollywood for a while. He went back to Hong Kong, joined the Hong Kong movie scene, did uh, some movies with Golden Harvest, which was run by Raymond Chow. And the first one they filmed in Thailand, and it's a little gem called The Big Boss. Now, The Big Boss is not the name Americans saw it by. It was called Fists of Fury to the Americans. But in Australia and other markets, it was known as The Big Boss. And uh, this one's great. In it, Bruce Lee plays a character who travels from rural China to Thailand because there's no work where he was born. And so he goes to Thailand to work in um, an ice factory, a factory that manufactures ice. <clears throat> and of course, he's marvellous at Kung Fu. But he's a bit of a naive country boy. I'm going to review all of these movies in a video, so I'm not going to talk much about them. There's the bit at the back bit of Bruce Lee Kung Fu action. Really great film. I loved this one re-watching it. It was just so worthwhile. There's extras in here. There's a documentary about Bruce Lee. There's a little talk about how the original soundtrack music wasn't used in some Western markets and they got a German guy called Peter Thomas to do it, who'd done a whole bunch of Eurospy movie soundtracks. So you got that. There's an interview with Tong Wai who was involved in the film. Uh, rare scene extension. Alternate openings. The openings were kind of basic, but there are alternate openings and an alternate ending, which kind of softens the ending a little bit in some markets. It's got a stills gallery and trailers. And you also get, and here's, first off, you also get an alternative poster on the back of it. But you also get a nice little card with the um, movie poster on it. So you can keep that or you can just leave it in the box like I'm doing. So, yeah, that one I bought, which was great. And the second one I bought, too, and this is the second one I watched, which I watched today. And it's the one that in America is known as the Chinese Connection, but in Australia and other markets it's known as Fist of Fury. Now, this one runs very parallel to the Angela Mao Yin movie, Hapkido, which I talked about in a previous video. And Hapkido is basically a gender flip remake of Fist the Fury, there's the inside box. There's the alternative Chinese cover art, which is in there. And this one, too, has a little card on it. So I enjoyed re-watching this one. How oh, good. I've got a little companion now. Coming in, Luna. Luna's down below here, but I don't think she wants to be picked up. So, yeah, Fist of Fury, great Hong Kong action film. This one was filmed in Hong Kong rather than Thailand like the first one was. And it was worthwhile. So I had those two already in the bag. And I was thinking about buying the other two. And then Umbrella contacted me and said, Do you want some movies? And I went, yeah. So they gave me a few movies to review. And I will do that. So the next video I'm going to do for you is going to be the review of the four Bruce Lee movies. But uh, the third one's here. It's a movie that people know very, very well. Got a slipcover as well. Way of the Dragon. It's the one where Bruce Lee kicks the living hell out of Chuck Norris in the Roman Colosseum, but not really. There's the back cover artwork on it. 
and again it has a nice little card inside this one's got a bunch of documentaries on it as well they've all got documentaries on it um i'm not going to go into them yet uh apart from the fact that they do they do have a trailers from hell in this one with brian trenchard smith talking about way of the dragon the way of the dragon and yeah i'm looking forward to revisiting that one if only to see chuck norris get his ass kicked so once more the coliseum echoes the sound of a fight to the death that's all you need to know and bruce lee so that brings us to the one that's a little more problematic it was directed by robert klaus and it's the one that was posthumous and kind of pieced together with some body doubles and other bits of business haven't watched this one fully since vhs day so i'm going to give it an honest review when i do and that of course is game of death game of death i'm looking forward to but i'm kind of dreading as well because uh, i know it's not a complete bruce lee movie in that sense there is that back cover art which is kind of cool i like that there's the iconic there's the iconic sweatsuit he's wearing and there's some bloopers and alternative takes as well so i'm going to kind you know i'm kind of ambivalent about this one because i have such a respect for bruce lee's oeuvre and when i review the movies i'm going to talk about his acting in them as well people never talk about bruce lee's acting they talk about him as a pre as a presence in movies and as a martial artist and, and all of that kind of thing but there's a few things to say about his acting that i really want to say in these movies this one says one man against a syndicate of evil and you gotta love that so uh, again this was produced by raymond chow at golden harvest in collaboration with warner brothers and they got robert klaus over to uh direct it's got kareem abdul jabbar in it gig young dean jagger colin camp hugh o'brien chuck norris mil novak um roy chow danny Santo, robert wall and of course kareem abdul jabbar as i said but um yeah this one is going to be an interesting one to watch now all of these ones are region b so i'll let you know that up front i'll just double check all the covers yeah they're all region b but having said that they're worth getting because the extras are fine they'll sit nicely on a shelf like that too so you've got that as an option to keep them all together i'm not sure whether i'm going to do them alphabetically on the shelves back here or keep them all together i may be tempted to keep them all together but there's the four of them uh price is reasonable I, I like for the amount of stuff you're getting the price on these is, is pretty damn good and i do have other versions of these movies but i'm going to get rid of those and keep these ones because it's just a, such a good package umbrella entertainment also has a bunch of different series within their um product and this one's called beyond genres which is genre films but with extras to them and, and movies that in some way transcend their genre and the first one i've got is actually volume 12. they've been doing this for a while so there are 16 volumes of this but i don't have all of them i've got a few of them i've got i've got psycho gorman and i've got these three that um, umbrella sent me this one i like because i saw it in the cinema with the directors there are two directors the sperry brothers introducing the film at a film festival way back when the movie came out it's a little australian zombie film called undead which is set in queensland filmed in queensland the sperry brothers took a year to make this film so all of the special effects all the computer special effects on this were done on a laptop in the year it came out in, in 2003 and uh, it's a nice little kind of over-the-top zombie film a little like early peter jackson in some ways a little like evil dead in some ways but very much australian in general and the good thing about this one is region free it's got all three regions in it so you can get this one from umbrella and wherever you are it should play on your blu-ray player it's got audio and commentary with the directors peter and michael spierig and cinematographer andy strayhorn on the set of the undead attack of the undead making of the undead and um, undead camera and makeup tests stills gallery theatrical trailer really interesting they've got so much information in this one and i'm glad that it's come out in uh this format too it, did, it was released on dvd back in the day but this is a much better product and the good thing about this one too is as well as getting the movie and by the way there's the wonderful artwork with the triple shotgun on it that the main protagonist has but not only do you get the movie you also get the original motion picture soundtrack on cd 
which not every video will have that so um, I kind of like that I haven't I can't recall much about the soundtrack but I like the fact that it's there and I will stick it in the player and give it a listen but uh, yeah it's a really nice package of stuff not for the kids to be honest with you it's not for children at all but Undead is definitely worth checking out. The Sperry Brothers went on to make a lot of good other films. They made Daybreakers, of course. They also made The Wonderful Predestination, one of the greatest adaptations of Heinlein's work ever. And they also went on to make a movie called Winchester, which didn't do so well. So there's now working on other projects because once you have one failure in Hollywood, they don't like you anymore. I've got fond memories of seeing this in the cinema. And... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got this. It really is one of those movies that I have a relationship with because I saw it. I talked to the directors and asked questions and asked stupid questions, by the way, in the question and answer afterwards. But um, yeah, I, I like the fact that I've got that one. And also the soundtrack. That brings us to a movie that people know. It's from 1981, so you know it's good. Animated, um, over-the-top kind of science fictional and fantasy animation it's a movie that doesn't get a lot of love particularly and i've actually read the comics it was based on before i ever saw the movie heavy metal haven't watched this for a long time but it's really nice in animation a bit transgressive by modern standards there's the artwork on the back. It's got a ton of extras in it. I'm saving my ammunition on this one until I rewatch it. So I'll talk about it more when I've rewatched it. But the cool thing is, if you get this one, you also get a car air freshener for heavy metal. And I've smelt it, and it's quite a, a nice fragrance on the um, air freshener in there. There's a lot of bad air fresheners for cars out there. But this one smells like a man's cologne, a good man's cologne. So I'm quite happy with that one. As soon as I finish recording this, and I'm going to put it up in the car, and uh, yeah, we'll have that hanging in the car with the woman sitting on top of the giant lizard with the sword in the air in the car. Gonna love that. Uh, the music in this is pretty good. It's got the voices of John Candy and Harold Ramis doing some of the things. It's got a soundtrack by Black Sabbath, Blue Oyster Cult, Cheap Trick Devo, Donald Fagan, Don Felder, Grand Funk Railroad, Sammy Hagar. Journey Nazareth, Stevie Nicks, Riggs, and Trust. The only thing it doesn't have is Dave Dido, Zubiki, Mick, and Titch. But there are extras on this one as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting that one. 1980s were a wild time and uh, wild movie. So I'm going to really groove on that one. And the third one I've got for you is, by the way, I'm going to review all of these much more fully in, in future weeks. This one is the movie that kind of bridged the gap between working for Troma and working on much larger pictures and, and much more interesting pictures for James Gunn, the director of this. It's got Nathan Fillion, Elizabeth Banks, Michael Rooker, Greg Henry. It is Slither. Body horror, science fiction, over the top madness, this one. And uh, yeah, I haven't seen it for a while, but I'm looking forward to it. Nice, in, nice um, cover art on the inside. And then, of course, it's got the, the kind of bare bones without the text poster art there. Um, inside, you've got the disc, and the disc is pretty groovy too. Yeah, I mean, I like this. I remember some of the body horror was totally over the top on this one. And the movies that James Gunn did before he hit the MCU and before he hit the DCEU and made the superhero movies are interesting. There's a movie he did with Rain Wilson and Elliot Page called... Uh, Super, which if you haven't seen it, you've got to check that one out as well. He also worked on Tromeo and Juliet for Troma, which is a fantastic Shakespearean adaptation. Um, a Troma version of uh, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is definitely worth seeing, particularly when you realize that they've got Lemmy from Motorhead doing iambic pentameter on the, in the movie. And it's a lot of fun, that one. But uh, just to stop drifting away from the subject going to enjoy sliver i think it's definitely a late night movie it's going to be one of those ones where i have an extra espresso or two and just kind of groove on it and really enjoy it and just get the best out of the movie there's one more movie from umbrella i want to talk about it's not one they gave me 
It's definitely one I bought because I, I liked this movie when I first saw it back in the day. It's from 1993, directed by Shirley Barrett. It's under the um, label of Sunburnt Screens, which is the prestige Australian film label that Umbrella have created. It stars Miranda Otto, Rebecca Frith, George Shevstov, I knew I was going to get it wrong, George Shevstov, and John Alanzu. And it's a little film called Love Serenade, which you might not have heard of, but you want to see this film. It's about a couple of young sisters who live in a town along the uh, Murray River in Victoria here. It's a dry, wheat belt town. There's not much for them to do. And both of them become enamored with a radio disc jockey in the local area. A guy called Ken Sherry, played by George Sevstov, um, who basically is he's basically the player of the town and he gets involved with them. Only problem is, he may or may not be a fish it's got a bit of magic realism to it it's funny it's touching uh, i'm going to really love re-watching this one and i will review it because i think this is one that people need to know about it's all region as well so if you buy this one from umbrella you're going to get your money's worth because this one is an australian kind of hidden gem it takes its own time the cinematography is fantastic with the big wheat silos out up in the wheat belt and definitely gives the mood. I, I go up there regularly just for my mental health drive. So I'll drive 300 kilometers up to the wheat belt towns around Robin Vale and Redcliffe where this was filmed. There's the back cover art so you can get a little bit of an idea about what it looks like. And it is a really fun little film, uh, quite quirky and wonderful. And I think it needs to be known by more people. So that's it for this time around. That's what I've got for you. Um, next video I do, I'm going to be reviewing the four Bruce Lee movies. Then I'm going to review the three from Beyond Genres. And I'll throw in Love Serenade at some stage. Maybe in a hidden gem video I do in the future. But uh, thank you again to Umbrella Entertainment for giving me the good stuff. Um, and the other good stuff. And yeah, it's, it's going to be fun to go and go down the rabbit hole of these genre works. So more Bruce Lee Kung Fu in my future. More weird things like Undead and Sliver and Heavy Metal. So, yeah. And the car is going to smell fragrant AF once I hook that little guy up. So, yeah, that's it for this time around. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You can also support the channel a little bit by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema and donating there. The people who do support the channel at Patreon will be getting written reviews as well from me. I haven't done one for a couple of weeks, but I'm going to get back into it next week after there's a whole bunch of things happening here over the next few days. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more written reviews as well because they are a lot of fun to do. So anyway, look after yourselves. If you're here in Australia, fingers crossed for the federal election. If you're not, you won't understand at all how passionately we feel about that. Anyway, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch some Bruce Lee movies. And I'll catch you next time.